Hey folks, welcome back to another video all by my lonesome where I'm doing a top 10 games from one of my favorite publishers. And today uh, we're doing my top 10 Days of Wonder games. Now there are a couple of caveats here because uh, these, uh, all of these games I have been introduced through by Days of Wonder, but a couple of them have been picked up by other publishers recently and have been redistributed or republished through another publisher. But they were all originally Days of Wonder games, so I'm going to allow them to be on this list uh, simply uh, because, hey, it's my list and I can kind of make that determination, I guess you could say. So uh, there you have it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my top 10 Days of Wonder games. Number 10 is a game that you probably wouldn't expect to be on the list, but I did find out that it was a little bit more difficult to make a top 10 Days of Wonder games list because of their model. They only put out one uh, really big game a year, and uh, it's not that I dislike that model, I just think it makes it a little bit more difficult because they're not, you know, uh, fire hosing the games every year like some companies are. They're being very picky about what uh, games they release each year, and so made it a little bit more of a tight field, so to speak. So, my number 10, not what you might be expecting, is Five Tribes. Now, I do enjoy the game, and I think it has a great... Um, it's a great design. Uh, it is fun to play, but my mind does clutch up on it a little bit because I do struggle with finding those optimal moves. And uh, a move that might be very apparent to some other people and actually has been in the, in the past uh, might not be very apparent to me. And, and that has caused a lot of frustration. But at the same time, I do see the value. I do see the uh, genius, I guess you could say, that is in the game using an older Mancala-esque mechanic and uh, making another game built and building another game around that. So I do enjoy the game. It's a little bit frustrating. I will play it, um, but it just squeaks in at number ten here. Uh, and it's 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 more more about the marketing uh, strategy that Days of Wonder uses that really allowed this to be up on there. Uh, but I do enjoy the game, so I'm okay with it being on my list, but it is number 10, five tribes. Number nine is Quadropolis, and uh, Quadropolis is a game that uh, has a beautiful look on the table. I, I like the fact that I like city building games, generally speaking, and uh, I like the idea that Quadropolis has with it and the fact that it looks really good as well. I just have enjoyed the game a lot. Um, I haven't played it recently that often, but I do enjoy it, and I think it's a great looking game, and it is a great uh, set of mechanics mechanisms as well. So uh, as you can see with most of these Days of Wonder games, the production quality is really high and it looks great. And that's part of that whole marketing style that we talked about where um, they don't uh, fire hose the games every year. And, and it really is evident because you have all of these games that look really, really good. And so that's my number nine, Quadropolis. Number eight uh, definitely doesn't uh, skimp on the production quality and that is Relic Runners. Uh, this one is a very fun game as well. Well, it has a, 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 a very nice production quality. It looks great on the table. Um, all of the different gems that are around the board really pop. And the mechanisms are pretty fun and engaging as well. It's a very fun game. And if you haven't tried it yet, you really, really should. Because it's uh, just one of those great classics. So that's my number eight. Relic Runners. My number nine is uh, one of those two games that I talked about earlier at the beginning of the video where they have been picked up by other companies and, and are being reproduced. And this one is called Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Now, this was one of the first games where you actually used the box uh, to play the game. And, and I really did think that that was just an, an, an enormous idea. And I loved the fact that you were building the palace as you went through the game uh, with 3D plastic pieces and it just popped on the table. And on top of that, uh, the mechanisms employed were also very fun as well. So uh, the production quality of this is of course off the chain. Uh, the new version also looks very good as well. So I'm looking forward to giving that one a try, but Days of Wonder is, is really where this game came from for me. And I still have this on my shelf. So I'm okay with it being on my list. That's my number seven, Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Now, you want to talk about good looking games. Number six definitely uh, falls within that realm. Has great wooden pieces, superb artwork, and uh, the board just really pops every time you get it on the table. We're talking about Yamatai. Now, Yamatai has a lot of really interesting mechanisms, um, but that would be, I guess, fun enough. 
But what really pulls this game out is how the game looks. I mean, it commands attention whenever it hits the table because it has so many different colors being employed and they all kind of flow together. Uh, the special abilities that a lot of those different cards allow you to have are very fun as well. But it's, it's really a... Uh, if you're not careful, I guess you could say it could be a little bit of a brain burner to do well, at least. Um, and But it's just so fun to play, and it looks so great on the table. Had to include it on my list. My number six, Yamatai. Now, my number five here, you could probably uh, put any Ticket to Ride game in there that you would like, but my favorite Ticket to Ride game is Marklin, the Marklin edition, where uh, each of the different... Um, uh, train cards that you use to move along your routes or, or to place your routes and that type of thing have a different illustration on them. Not one card is the same as the other, as any of the others. And I really think that's a great thing. On top of that, it has a lot of fun mechanisms as far as uh, transporting passengers and that type of thing as well. Now, the, the tokens that, they, that were used in order to employ that passenger that's a little bit fiddly on the setup, and it's nerve-wracking because you don't want to lose any of them. But it's a really fun version of Ticket to Ride. It's my favorite version of Ticket to Ride. And I, I, I just really enjoy the production value that went into this one by all of those cards having different illustrations. And it, it almost feels like you, are, uh, you have your own collector's edition of Ticket to Ride at that point. Uh, so I really enjoy it. I think it's a great version. My favorite, my number five, Ticket to Ride, Markland. My number four is probably one of my favorite area control games that's out there, and that is Small World. Now, I like Small World for its area control qualities, but I also like it for the uh, different racial abilities that you'll have and the little special abilities that get tagged onto them. And the fact that you control multiple races uh, throughout the course of one game also just kind of throws in that whole uh, sandboxy feel to it. Uh, you're generally doing the same thing, but each faction or race plays differently because of its own uh, special ability, but it also plays even further more differently because of the extra ability that gets tagged onto it. So uh, the combinations seem absolutely endless, almost infinite that you could have with this game because they have so many expansions out for it now. But uh, my uh, Underworld also didn't make my list because uh, I, I still like the original better. I, I, it's not that I dislike Underworld. This one I just like more. And there have been some, you know, hits and misses for uh, like building your own board. Eh, didn't like that so much. Um, but that's another thing that I liked about it is that each player count had its own board. So it kind of scaled very well between all of the different players, uh, player counts. So uh, Small World was going to make my list and, and, and it ended up on number four. Number three, we're hearkening way back here to one of my first uh, entries into the uh, cooperative or uh, cooperative with a trader or a cooperative, semi-cooperative game genre, and that is Shadows Over Camelot. Now, the mechanisms employed are not hugely thematic. Um, uh, you're basically trying to construct different kinds of poker hands in order to uh, defeat some of these different places on the board, and you're, you're, you're searching uh, for the traitor, trying to find out who he is, you're trying to uh, get enough white swords around the, the, the round table to win the game. Uh, it's, it's just so much goodness here, but it's not really thematic. The, the theme comes in with the artwork, absolutely, um, but on top of that, it's, it's the banter between the players as you're playing the game. I don't think I've ever played a game of this where we were not quoting Monty Python's Quest for the Holy Grail uh, throughout the entirety of, of the uh, the game. Of course, off and on, not every word was a quote, but you get the idea. And that's really where the theme comes alive because uh, it's just a very fun time and a lot of enjoyment is had every time Shadows Over Camelot hits the table. I usually want to play it where, I, where we know there's a traitor, we just don't know who it is, but other people have said that they enjoy playing where you don't know if there's a traitor or not. There could be or there could not be. It's really what's up to you, but I enjoy playing that we know that there's a traitor. We just need to figure out who it is. So that's my number four. I'm sorry. So that's my number three, Shadows Over Camelot. My number two is the second game that's been picked up by a, another publisher since it was made by Days of Wonder, and that is Colosseum. Uh, 
<clears throat> Tasty Mitchell Games has picked it up and did a very good job of reprinting the game uh, in its basic form as far as the rules and mechanisms employed are concerned. Now, they, they took a lot of license on changing how the game looked, and I wasn't really on board for that, but at the end of the day, as far as the graphic design choices that they made, but at the end of the day, they reprinted a classic game and it was a good production of it. So I have to give them kudos for doing that because they did do a good job. I just didn't like, you know, eh, the, the, the colors and the, and, and the illustrations that were used. Pfft, it's still a great game and it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just very happy that they were able to remake it. But... The Days of Wonder version is still my favorite version, so uh, Coliseum is definitely my number two. And so my number one Days of Wonder game, if you know anything about me, you knew this was most coming, and that is Memoir 44. I have enjoyed this game so much. It is a war game in my opinion, not a traditional war game with the little chits and and uh, tables and charts and everything that you have to consult uh, time and time again. It is a very, it's a much more simple experience, much more streamlined experience, but it is still a simulation of, of a war game. And uh, I, I like it because it's that, it is a simple simulation. Now, on top of that, it also provides a level of education with every single scenario because it has a background section on every scenario that gives you exactly what was going on for for that particular battle that you're about to reenact, so to speak. So uh, I like that as well, because it just provides that extra layer of, uh, remember, this was real, uh, and this happened to people. Um, so it, it's, it's readily there, right in front of your eyes, that this is history, it is not just a game. And I like that, I like it a lot. And so um, they've, started giving it a little bit more attention uh, with redoing their air pack. Um, and so I'm looking forward to uh, getting that to the table whenever we get the review copy. Hopefully we do. But uh, this is by far my, my favorite Days of Wonder game. And uh, I'm, I'm so glad to own uh, a good bit of it as well. And that's that. My top 10 Days of Wonder games. And yeah, I took a little bit of license here on a couple of these things because a couple of these games are now being published by other publishers. But the originals were published by Days of Wonder. So that's why I'm including them on this list. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. And uh, we hope you have a good day. Take care. And we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side.